welcome to our Easter week edition on Mission Park Cares. And you know, today we're gonna to introduce you to some folks who are helping thousands of people on the road to recovery. Then we'll get the recipe for a super easy Easter dish from Luca Della Casa. And then we'll celebrate the life of an amazing general who's forever remembered at Mission Park. But first, here's Justin Lindstrom from Christ Episcopal Church with some special thoughts for Palm Sunday. Hello, San Antonio. I'm Justin Lindstrom. I'm one of the clergy here at Christ Episcopal Church. This Sunday, today, we are entering into Holy Week with Palm Sunday. This is the day where we read about Jesus um, being um, ushered into the city of Jerusalem with palm branches and people yelling and screaming, Hail, King of the Jews! You know, Alleluia, Christ our, our Lord is here. And, and it's a, this momentous occasion where Jesus is celebrated and, um, and hailed as a, a king and treated as such. But later in the week, we will actually see that the same people who hailed him as a king will actually be threatened by his leadership and by his, his message, his message of, of love and grace, which is very different than those who have power wanted to hear. And they'll be the same people who will yell, crucify him, crucify him. And so our challenge on Palm Sunday is to think about why is it so important? It's the beginning of Holy Week. It's the beginning of our Lord's Passion. But here's the question that I wanna pose for you today is how is Jesus Christ making a triumphant entry into your life? How is Jesus changing your life, transforming you, restoring you, redeeming you? For as the same, as, as, as Jesus is riding into Jerusalem, he's riding into our lives. And he is, is transforming us and making us whole. I pray that that would be um, something that we would think about this Holy Week and on this Palm Sunday. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks and praise for your son, Jesus Christ, for his triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem and for being hailed a king, for he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Prince of Peace. And Lord God, we pray that you would inspire us to, to identify how you are walking into our lives and how you're entering into our lives and how we can share your love and grace with everyone that we meet. Guide us, lead us, and direct us, O God. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Now it's time to meet the amazing team of Thrive Well Cancer Foundation. Dick, will you introduce us to them? No, oh, it's a treat for me to do this. I'm here with Aaron and Bob with Thrive Well, and we're gonna talk about a little research, patient assistance, and wellness classes. So who would like to answer that question for me? Well, let me tell you why that's, that's important. I, I always try to describe our organization kind of like a three-leg stool, uh, because we have three major parts. The, the very first part, and, and really kind of the heart of our organization is patient assistance. That's where we help folks who, who need help uh, financially to be able to get the cancer uh, treatment that they need. We have, a, a, I guess, the privilege of having Dr. Lang, uh, who is a, a very prominent uh, physician uh, in, in treating cancer, who uh, did a lot of research in, in this area. And she came up with the, the opportunity uh, through what she found out in research that exercise uh, helps in limiting the reoccurrence of cancer. And so we started the Diva and Dudes program. And then, and then we also uh, have the research side. The research side, uh, it is actually the smallest leg on our stool, but it, but it's also uh, very, very important. And we do local research. We try to uh, limit our research to, to folks in the San Antonio area, and these are starter research projects. Aaron, you need to tell me a little bit about the divas and do's, if sure. I'm saying that correctly, sure. and yep. how that impacts you know, your patient care. Sure. So uh, as Bob stated, Diva and Dudes started back in 2007 because the research proves that people who stick to a pretty healthy lifestyle in terms of their exercise and nutrition can cut their chances of having a recurrence in their disease by up to 50%. And so we are currently providing upwards of 35 different exercise classes a week. We do nutrition classes every week. Um, and through those classes, people have in their hands really tangible programming that can 
significantly reduce their chances of recurrence. So we have registered dietitians who work with the patients and survivors who are part of our Diva and Dude program. We do that through weekly classes. And so folks actually come to a class that can be a cooking class, it can be a lecture series, and they will leave with really practical ideas and recipes that they can take home to their families and implement immediately. Bob, if we could talk a little bit about the patient assistance that you were mm -hmm. referring to earlier. What all is involved? What all do you do? What all can you help somebody with? I, th I think the patient assistance, which is, is really kind of at the heart of what we do, uh, it, it came from the fact that there are really three situations you can be in if you have cancer. One is, is you can comfortably pay for everything. Uh, another is, is that you can be so far away from that that there's, there are other places to get assistance. But there's a vast group of people in the middle who are working class folks who are working hard uh, and many times have to miss work, uh, many times have insurance with tremendously high deductibles. And the uh, patient assistance really uh, steps in to be able to help folks uh, step up and get the very best care they possibly can when if left alone, they would simply not be able to afford that or not be th meet the deductible or not be able to get the transportation to get there. So looking back at uh, the 22 year, uh, we had approximately 2,000 folks that we were able to support with our patient assistance in some way. And, and the thing that uh, we say with great pride is, is we help that many people, but we also know in the back of our mind there are more people that need that help. Well, Bob, you have a lot of things on your plate and you're very passionate about what you do. But so why do you get involved with Thrivewell? I've, I've lost uh, three family members, close family members to cancer. I've had uh, prostate cancer myself and I'm a 10 year survivor. I guess probably about three years or two or three years after I had had my recovery and I was, I was clear, I was asked to, to look at this organization and my thought was, Man, I have been blessed. What can I do that can help some other folks? It doesn't take a lot to get your mind around what would happen if I didn't have X, Y, and Z. And so I feel like our whole team, our team of five, we're very small, um, it's very personal for all of us. We all have walked with family members and friends and know the challenges that come along with a diagnosis and ThriveWell is providing very tangible services to folks who are in such a state of need um, that we get to see the immediate impact of the dollars that are raised, the programming that we're providing. We get to see that in action. Erin, I understand there's a big event that you've got coming up. Yes, our and, biggest uh, fundraiser of the year. And I want to know more about it than that here. It's at the WIC. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about this. Sure. This it's our Conquering Cancer in Every Color Luncheon. It's going to be held on Friday, April 14th. Again, it's our biggest fundraiser of the year. Our revenue goal is half a million dollars and we are gonna get there to help more people here in San Antonio. Um, we do have a few seats left. It's $150 a seat. Um, but even if you can't make it that day, if you would like to contribute to the cause and help our mission of providing support for local families who are battling this disease, if you make a donation to ThriveWell, it's going to go into effect immediately. Our website is very simple. It's thrivewell.org. We also have a huge social media following on Facebook. It's ThriveWell SA. Instagram is also ThriveWell SA. Our YouTube channel is ThriveWell SA. We're really easy to find. And if you are not online at all, you can just call the office. It's 210-593-5949. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Kristen, did you know that Chef Luca de la Casa has got a new restaurant? I sure do, and I can't wait to see what he's cooking for Easter. Luca, got to know, what are you cooking this week? Hey guys, hi, and thanks for having me again with you. Today, I'm here and on a new location on uh, 1604. We opened this location back in October, and since then, it's been one of uh, the neighborhood uh, favorites. And uh, one of the dishes that become really, really popular is the dish that I will show you today. I'm going to share with you the recipe uh, for a delicious roasted sea bass. So this fish cannot really be overcooked or is very difficult to do so. And we don't want to cook it too slow. So what we're going to do today is uh, taking this beautiful fillet and uh, slightly scorch it on the top, but we don't want to go uh, all the way through with the blade. 
and then we're gonna go and add uh, some uh, simple seasoning. I'm gonna use uh, some salt, uh, some black pepper, and some olive oil. Let's put the fish in the oven. Here in Nonna 1604, we have a beautiful pizza oven and we cook most of our protein in this oven. But you can make this recipe at home in your regular oven and set at 500 degrees. So let's start putting a little bit of olive oil on the bottom of this uh, cast iron pan, accommodate the fish on it, and then I'm gonna drizzle a little extra olive oil on the sea bass. This is the way it should look when you go in the oven. Very good guys, now the second part of this recipe. Well, our sea bass cook in the oven and it's gonna take uh, about 15, uh, 18 minutes, depending on the size of the filet. We're gonna take this time to make this uh, delicious parsley sauce. So let's start with the base of it. To give uh, this sauce a nice body, I like to use a little bit of focaccia bread. And I'm gonna pour over it one cup of champagne vinegar. At this point, we're gonna let it sit there and we're gonna start introducing all the ingredients in the blender. I'm gonna start introducing one cup of good olive oil. Then we're gonna go with the garlic and shallots. In this case, I'm gonna use six cloves of garlic and one whole shallot that I uh, chop it up. One uh, tablespoon of lemon juice for some good acidity. And obviously some nice fresh parsley, all right? So what I like to do is just take the thick part of the stems away. Don't be shy with the parsley. Now we're gonna add uh, the seasoning. We're gonna go with some salt, one uh, tablespoon and a half, a couple of teaspoons of uh, black pepper, and I like to use a little bit of cumin. Very good, now that the focaccia is soft and ready to go in the blender, we're gonna add everything in. I'm gonna start the blender here shortly, and I'm gonna use the remaining cup of uh, olive oil uh, to emulsify our sauce. Very good guys, let's check it out. Wow, it smells delicious to start with. All right guys, it's time to take the sea bass out of the oven. Look fantastic. It's cooked perfectly, has a nice brown crust on it, and it's falling apart, it's just ready to get plated. Let's start with our sauce. Don't be shy with it. Let's put a good amount on the bottom of the plate. And now the sea bass just on top of it. Be gentle, because it's very delicate. At this point, it can break apart. And you can serve it this way if you like. Here in Nonna 1604, we like to serve it with a side of fried cauliflower. Guys, this is a delicious combination. Check it out. And uh, a little bit of fresh parsley to finish. And a touch of fresh olive oil. Well, guys, this is all here from Nonna 1604. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, see you next time. Now, here's Father Aguilar in San Pedro Springs Park with a blessing for Easter week. Good morning. Hosanna to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, who sent our Lord Jesus Christ, came upon us, and through his passion, death, crucifixion, and resurrection, gives us hope. May we observe this Palm Sunday and Holy Week as a time of reflection upon our faith, our hope, and our love of God 
This we pray in your holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm on the steps of what was called the San Pedro Playhouse, now known as the Public Theater, at the San Pedro Springs Park, second oldest park in the United States after the Boston Common. And it's a place of much memory for me. Among them is I got hurt on this property. Playing in the swings, I have this scar right here, at the top of my head. It was an accident, but pretty traumatic for my parents and me. Yet, we had hope in the emergency room. We had hope that I would get better. The message of Palm Sunday is hope, that despite any fears that we have, violence in the world, concern about inflation, politics, whatever it is that bothers us, worries us, the temptation is to fall into fear. The message of Jesus as he comes into Jerusalem is Hosanna, to have hope. Those voices changed upon him within that week and they were calling for him to be crucified. And it reminds us again, as Jesus was hung upon the cross, that this posture means God is love forever. Reside in that love, live in that faith, and always count on that hope that we may have in God's name. And this we pray in the God who gives us faith, the God who grants us hope, the God who is always love. Amen. Once in a great while, a true hero walks among us. That's the story of a Brigadier General and a doctor named Jackie Stevenson. Let's take a few minutes to celebrate his absolutely amazing life. An American hero and a servant leader in his community. Brigadier General Jackie D. Stevenson has had many titles in his life, from doctor to father to general. Born in 1935 in Kansas, his family moved to Alice, Texas when he was a senior in high school. Upon graduation, Stevenson spent the next year driving a propane truck and working as a roughneck in the oil fields. A year later, he attended Texas a and University in Kingsville. He graduated with a degree in biology and had hopes to attend medical school. While he was in college, Stevenson met his future wife, Mary. Their loving relationship lasted 65 years, and together they raised four children, three daughters and a son. As Stevenson's family flourished, so did his career. After receiving his bachelor's degree, he attended the University of Texas Southwestern Medical School in Dallas and earned a degree of Doctor of Medicine. In his final year of medical school, he entered the Army's Senior Medical Student Program as a First Lieutenant. His first assignment was at Martin Army Hospital in Fort Benning, Georgia, where he earned the rank of Captain. When Stevenson completed his residency training in general surgery, he was assigned to the Tripler Army Medical Center in Honolulu, Hawaii. There he spent three years of residency training in urology. With his specialty training complete, Stevenson was deployed to Vietnam in 1968. There he served a 12-month tour as a staff urologist. During his service, he became a well-decorated serviceman, earning several distinctions and awards, including the Legion of Merit and the Bronze Star. When his service in Vietnam came to an end, Stevenson and his family moved to San Antonio. He began his new role as a chief of urology at the Brook Army Medical Center. Stevenson held many different positions in his later years of military service, from serving at Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, D.C., to serving as a state surgeon for the Ohio National Guard. He later achieved the rank a Brigadier General. When Stevenson's active service came to an end, he planted his roots in San Antonio for good and created his own private practice. 
a job that allowed him to serve the San Antonio community until retiring in the 2010s. Stevenson passed away in July 2021 at the age of 86. He's buried at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery here in San Antonio, Texas. Brigadier General Jackie D. Stevenson, a life well lived and forever remembered by Mission Park. Thank you for joining us on this Easter week edition of Mission Park Cares. And we wish you an entire week of blessings for this Easter week. Please remember, we love you. And at Mission Park, it's our mission to care. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter.